So we've got something very, very exciting uh, to announce on this channel that this is my very first opportunity of putting my eyes and my hands on this. And hopefully it'll be one of the very first times the public is actually seeing this as well. We've got a pretty fancy shiny new box here. Well, it's not really new anymore. I guess it has some holes in it from UPS. But uh, what's inside of it is anybody's guess at this point. I have seen a couple of promo materials for this actual stuff that's in the box behind me. And I'm very excited to be able to open it, look at it, shoot it, and play with it, and have a lot of fun with it, hopefully. Yeah, let's get into it. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery, and we're going to make this channel a great resource to all types of archery. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the notification bell. That way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. I'd appreciate it. So like I said, I haven't opened this yet, and uh, this is the very first time I'm putting my eyes on it as well. So I'm very, very excited, and I'm honored that Win and Win is sending me some stuff that no one else has seen before. Oh, these are big stickers. Should I put it over this paint chip that so many people have been complaining about? I don't know what gray it is. I could color it in with a Sharpie if you'd like. It's, uh, it'd be black. So there's two things. One is definitely a little bit heavier than the other. Slightly bigger as well. Before I open those, when Win asked if I wouldn't mind throwing a shirt on for them during this, so I'll put it on for some of this because I do like the company. And like I said, I'm super honored that they would spend the time to send to me this stuff to play with before anyone else. Very, very exciting. I would do the same for any company if they chose to send me some stuff like this and I would be just as honored. Um, but, you know, like I said, I've got a good relationship with Win and Win as it is. So it's no surprise, you know, that they would uh, send me over some stuff to check out. Like I said, this is the least I could do for them. So, I've got two new things. The new lineup for 2021. I've got a set of limbs and I've got a new riser here. And the new riser definitely looks pretty wild. You know, they sent me an email telling me um, that because of COVID, the whole pandemic thing being locked down, no tournaments going on, no nationals, no world tournaments, nothing like that. And they said they spent a lot of time and extra time this year engineering stuff. Uh, and so they've got some new stuff this year. And they're very excited to launch it. And here it is. It is very different looking. So this is called the Wea Wiz, or the Win and Win Wea Wiz Meta DX. So it has the vibration harmonic dampeners from Matthews. They actually worked with Matthews to license this product. This is gonna be really fun to play with because they've got a standard harmonic dampener in the center and then they have the EHS, uh, the stabilizer ones, which are a little bit bigger. And it feels like, no, the dampening materials are about the same, nice and soft. You can pull out the dampers. You can adjust the weights because I know in the past, at least, I have some that we've machined up out of brass that we could put in this. And I'm sure that there are companies out there that probably offer different weighted dampeners or the actual uh, the weight in the side dampener, rather. So you can change the balance of your riser as you're going along. So this is pretty cool. This will be something that actually would be very fun to play with. Got a very different balance than I'm used to. Very top pocket heavy. It has two different mounts for your sight bar, which is interesting. And then there's this metal plate here where the plunger and the rest mounts. So there's a plate front and back, very different looking. The finish on the riser is super nice. Standard uh, win and win adjustable limb blocks. Looks like they're standard collet limb bolts. They're standard collet limb adjustment system, three, four bushing mounts. So they've got a fair amount of mounts for bushings. Probably not enough for barebow. I don't know if these would be legal in barebow, specifically because of the, uh, it's a vibration dampener, but it's built into the riser. So I don't know if that's legal or not. I'd really have to scour the rule book to check that out to make sure. I'm gonna take this bolt out and see what that bolt is for. I think I read that this is, uh, an adjustable 
rest locator, like an adjustable plate, kind of probably what's found on the Hoyts, I would assume, you know, the Vertitune plates. But I don't know in which way, shape, or form or fashion that this is going to become adjustable. This is a prototype they sent me. This isn't the actual full production unit. Um, so this was their test riser that they have, but it's not their full-fledged production version. So they don't have all of the goodies inside of the actual package for me. Yeah, it is. So it's definitely a Vertitune type of plate adjuster system in through here. As you can see, it's uh, got big slots. Yeah, and the plate comes out. That's neat to see, you know. Looks like Hoyt uh, did something revolutionary that it appears that other companies like to see and like to play with. So you can see that I've got some slots here and probably, I bet you, now that I'm looking at it, the holes aren't very offset, but they are slightly. You can see how they are slightly off to one direction. So I'm gonna assume that that means that I could just flip it up and down to adjust from high to low. So I'm gonna have to email them to ask them some more questions about it to see what, where their normal risers are in this plate system. Because it looks like if I have it in this upper section like that, then it will be in line with that clicker plate. All of their old risers that I have here, it is in line with the little clicker plate, uh, you know, the little, the, the pin that comes out there. If I flip it over. Yeah, now it sits on the low side. So due to what I have learned in the past and what I like to see as far as my height on when I shot Hoyts, um, I like the high plate, so I'm gonna put it in the upper position. So I'm gonna first, I'm gonna set this up for Olympic style recurve because I rebuilt my range and I'm gonna play with it as a Olympic style recurve shooter first, shoot some scores with it, play with it. And then I may, um, I'll, I'll definitely set it up as a bare bow as well. So I'm just gonna put that back in place. So I'll have to take that out because I use a bolt-on style barebow rest. So you'll still be able to sandwich those in place just like you do on the Hoyts and that won't be an issue at all. Overall, I mean, looking at it, it's very smooth, very finished. The graphics are very minimal. There's honestly not a whole lot going on on this riser to be honest. So something that I, I think is amazing about Win and Win that I remember in about 2000 and, uh, 2009 uh, is when I really started seeing their promotional stuff firsthand and being able to see that they are talking about and actually showing the data from them testing their equipment, watching the string path tracking and limb tip flexing and all those things. And you don't see that really on any other manufacturer. So I have a very high level of respect for Win and Win for doing stuff like that and posting actual data findings and vibration and movement. And you know, I, I just never saw that anywhere else. So even when I shot Hoyt then, I was always in some ways a bit jealous because they had some really actual good hard data that would show, hey, look at our stuff, it looks really good. And over the years, their data is still there. They're still comparing and showing to their own products and sometimes to their uh, competitors' products. And it's just something that I don't see anywhere else. And I think that that is awesome. So to have some new products seen here for the first time and not anywhere else is even more exciting. So uh, this is their new limb as well. Very, very stealthy looking. This is the MXT-10 for 2021. Uh, this is the F version, the foam version. Um, very cool looking graphics on it, actually. This is a uh, highly refined looking. There's some really cool graphic-y looking stuff that's got some just neat detail hidden in there. Wheel is there. You can't barely see. Uh, I like the little gloss, going from gloss to matte. I like that. It looks really, really good are the same limb tips that I'm used to on my favorite pair of NS limbs that I've got from them. So I bet you these are gonna be super smooth. They supposedly have a new uh, graphene uh, dampener, like an absorption piece here that, that you see right there that's supposed to absorb a whole lot of vibration. And also um, there's a new layer of, I forget the name of the layer. I'd have to find it um, in the actual catalog to discuss it but it's in between the core layers and it's supposed to absorb some vibration. 
you know, they feel pretty rigid as far as torsional stability goes. Some of their graphics back in the day were getting a little cheesy, but um, they're definitely, I like this edgier look to it. The limb is super meaty through here. Like, look how fat and robust you could see through it again. I don't know why, but little things like that I always like. It's interesting, the limb really isn't that much meatier at the base. It's just that the shape of that damper thing that they've got here, that wedge on the front, is uh, really unique looking. Uh, so I guess it is a little thicker. That whole thing is elevated. This whole thing is added to the limb itself. It's supposedly supposed to reduce vibration by a lot and help clean up some of the aftershock and feel of the bow. The limb shape overall is the exact same that it normally is. There is no difference there. It definitely has that slight extra recurve. Uh, this one here is the new MXT-10 and this is the NS. Yeah, so it's got the same curve as the MXT GW and GF. So I'm gonna assume that it's very similar in feel. I mean, the fit's still great. Very typical, you know, good solid fit, but not too tight. Oops, see, beating up a new bow, typical of me. So nice and solid, but comes out easy. I mean, the typical fit is as usual. I'm gonna get a string. So I've had some people ask me where I got my string caddy from. I got, actually, uh, Vittorio and Frangili gave me this, cause it, you know, it's Gilo's little thing. This was before they had any risers out there. Um, I don't know if they sell it, but if they do, this that's where you can get it from. You can store all of your strings. You can make some notes as to what the string build is and have a good place to keep a whole lot of strings. So <clears throat> if they don't sell it yet, they should be because I've had a lot of people comment and ask where I got my little string caddy and it was given to me by, uh, I think Frangili ended up giving it to me years ago. Wow, it's got a lot of lot of tension down here at brace height a ton but it's honestly it has very little vibration thanks to these dampeners my tiller is a little off possibly so that little vibration but there is way less vibration in here than any other bow that I've plucked like that without any stabilizers on it. Obviously it's got dampeners in the riser, so it feels super nice. But the smoothness, like it feels so smooth. So I saw some data on this and it shows what they've showed compared to their standard limbs. <clears throat> it actually has more tension through like a lower, if you were to go from brace height to full draw and then clicker zone. A normal one would curve like like this and then do this, right? Whereas this one, it went up higher sooner and then tape, it didn't taper off past brace height, but it didn't ramp up at that clicker zone area. It's supposed to be a little softer. In a, in a, in a future video for sure, I will be doing some draw force curve testing. So I'll be able to see that actual data and compare it so you guys can check those things out. Um, that'll be in the, the relatively near future. I'm just getting geared up to actually finally start testing these things and put some claims of the test because I really like hard data points and really think it's important to have good actual real sound data. So the knocking point actually looks pretty close. It's like a weird, it's such an odd thing to look at because you know, Brady used to shoot with the Matthews risers when I lived at the Olympic Training Center with him. I was always jealous he had them because they were super nice. Um, and, you know, they had the dampeners top and bottom. And now it's a weird win and win Matthews hybrid. <laughs> it's very different. Very, very different. So, what I'm going to do... Just feels so good. I'm gonna do some preliminary setup here just to get it close. Um, yeah, brace height's way low. And work on getting this thing set up 
and see if I can find anything else odd that's in the system as I am adjusting it and getting it all set up. And then I'll take it outside and we'll go get a quick tune on it. And then I'll probably shoot around at 70 meters with it. And so we'll be able to see how it actually shoots and feels. Yeah, now that vibration's gone. Now that my tiller is a little bit more proper at the moment. And it's starting to quiet down even more. So I'm gonna put my standard Olympic style recurve stabilizer set up. I'm gonna use this AAE Gold extension on it. So this is actually a two piece extension. So if you're not familiar with how this actually works, I did a video about it not that long ago if you wanna check that out. Um, and, and it's basically two pieces with a vibration dampener in the middle. And you can adjust the tension of it as well as adjust the material of it to give you different feelings and uh, different feedback, different vibration properties, things like that. Looks like this one has the, the Delrin insert in it. So this is the Delrin insert that goes inside of here. I knew I had one. So this is the Delrin insert. And as you can see, I mean the uh, urethane insert. See, it's just like a urethane bushing. Whereas what was in this is the Delrin, which is a hard piece of plastic. Still has a relatively uh, high amount of vibration absorption um, with the Delrin one but I really just prefer the urethane one. It feels a million times better. So I'm gonna use my entire stabilizer system that I've used in the past. It works excellent. I've never had any issues with it. And so I plan on just doing the same thing. I'll probably end up having to balance it different again because I put my finger on the riser like this and it was very top pocket heavy. Now the cool thing about this is I could go like this, shoot it without it if I really wanted to. Um, I don't know if I would because I'm sure this is gonna make such a difference as far as vibration goes that I'm really gonna to want to keep these in the riser. And some of the slow speed data that I've seen on this stuff, they move inside this riser an incredible amount. So it's, it's pretty exciting, pretty neat to see. Looks like I have one third of an ounce more on my left bar than my right bar. Uh, just to help counteract the sight window just a little bit, you know, the weight of the sight window plus the sight bar off to the side and uh, to help remove the cant and have a really good aiming property that I like to see. So that's pretty standard for me. I, I like anywhere from one third to two thirds of an ounce more on the left V bar um, just because, and you don't have to have a perfectly balanced system in order to have exactly what you like. I suppose I can align the bow, huh? Probably should uh, make sure. They they usually do that for me. So it's not a fair uh, comparison for me to do it on camera and tell you, okay, it was this far off or wasn't. Because I'll tell you straight up that they align their stuff before they send it to me. Um, but I always make slight tweaks to it. Because we all adjust our bows slightly differently. You know, they use a sight window and eyeball it as the center of the bow. I like to use a stabilizer. I think that adds a bit more of a level of accuracy that just doing off the riser doesn't give you. My bows feel better that way anyway. Um, and I've had many people agree with me on that sentiment. Anyway, that's just a quick feedback. I'll probably align it really quick. Looks like I've got black everything. Okay, so I've got the bow clamped on a vise here with a straight stabilizer, because I definitely am gonna check the string alignment <clears throat> and make sure that that's all good to go along with my center shot. I'm not quite there yet. I've got to install the rest. I gotta install my sight, the clicker and things like that. A little tight on the threads, but it's a prototype, so I don't expect anything to be perfect. Once I get a production version, we'll see if the threads are a little tight like that, but it's still threaded in by hand, so it's nothing too concerning, but it definitely is not, it's not 100%, it's not how it normally is on these win and win setups. Normally everything threads in super nice and easy. It is so close. I'm actually gonna take this other camera here and take a picture of it, because this is always what I would suggest if you can't tell, you got to get both biter blocks in the photo and then line up your string on your stabilizer and take a photo. I always suggest a couple of them because you got to zoom in and you might be slightly off on the actual alignment. So like that one, the stabilizer slightly to the left even more to the left, still to the left, maybe a teeny tiny tiny bit to the right, but it looks pretty good. So this one's actually a really good version. You zoom in, 
and you can see how the string is in the center of the stabilizer. And then you pan up and you look and you can see there's maybe a slight gap on the right here and then you go down and you can see the bottom is pretty good to me. So bottom looks great, top's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit off, we're in the center of the riser. So I'm going to shift just that little bit. I'm going to check the other photo where I was slightly to the left and see what that looks like. I mean, it looks good to me, actually. It's so close. Yeah, it's close enough. So I'm going to call that good uh, as far as alignment goes, which is no surprise because, like I said, they send stuff aligned to me, so I don't really have to adjust that at all. Um, what I will do, though, is I will set my center shot here now, just like I normally do. Impossible to see without a white background. I think it's really close. A walk back tune will turn uh, tell for sure, but I think that's more than close enough to actually go and shoot and play with. So here's a little tip for you. I like to use shrink wrap on my clicker tip here instead of using the thick plastic uh, piece as well as I don't like the metal blade. This kind of dampens the feeling of what you actually feel while you're at full draw um, when you're coming through the clicker because sometimes the points can have like little burrs on them and actually you can feel the machine uh, marks if you use this type of clicker without a tip on it. I think it's a little bit more accurate with this shrink wrap on it so that's what I like to use. Um, it's really really simple to do. Just slip it on. I always make sure that it's in the height that I need it and then just uh, give it a little bit of heat and it'll shrink right down to the ideal spot. All right, so the clicker's on. Uh, put the stabilizers back on and I'm gonna go out there and start shooting some. I'll probably uh, continue this video, finish tuning with it, and then I will do a video of me shooting like a 72 arrow round or a, probably a 36 arrow round because I haven't shot very much at 70 meters and uh, we'll get a score going for that. And, and then I'm happily going to post some results that I have found and what I feel. And yeah, I cannot wait to actually get some arrows shot out of this thing. It's going to be very interesting because of the, va the vibrational properties on it seem to be quite exciting and enticing and I can't wait to get to playing with it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books, and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to, and above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.